Today I want to walk you through the installation of the Gotham Mayo Multifunctional Luminaire family. The first step in the installation is trying to determine what installation you have. The fixture can be installed as by itself, install from below, or it can install with an optional alternate construction housing pan that we would use for a T-grid ceiling or where required by local codes. And then we also have an insulation contact housing that could be used for IC construction or also Chicago plenum. When you order a Gotham Mild Luminaire, it will ship in between three and five boxes depending on the options you order. You'll always get a housing box, you'll get a trim, a colored baffle, and if you order a flangeless version, we'll ship a mud ring in a separate package. If you order one of the alternate construction fixtures, we'll send you an alternate construction pan, an IC box, or Chicago plenum box in a separate shipment. Inside the housing box, we include a template that you can use to cut the hole in the ceiling. The individual light engines, this particular model has three light engines. The manifold that attaches to the ceiling. And the electrical box that contains the drivers and electrical hookups. We will also include a hardware kit that includes the installation clips and jumpers required for the electrical box. When you're ready to install a Mayo Luminaire, make sure you have all of the tools that are required. We list out the tools that you'll need in the installation guide. We also recommend that you wear the required safety equipment, such as safety glasses and gloves to prevent cuts. The first step in installation is to take the provided template and attach it to the ceiling where you want to put your Luminaire. Once it's attached to the ceiling with tape, you can take a pencil or other marking device and mark and trace around the aperture that the fixture will install into. Once that's done, you can take the template down and then we recommend drilling holes in the corners with a, a electric drill just to start a keyhole saw. Then you can complete the cutout in the ceiling with a keyhole saw or rotozip tool. Once the aperture is cut out, we recommend that you test fit the manifold housing into that opening to make sure that the aperture is going to be big enough to do the installation or that you don't have any large gaps that you'll need to mud over later. The same aperture is used for either a flanged or flangeless installation, so it's the same template included in both fixtures. For a flangeless installation, we'll ship you a mud ring. The mud ring needs to be installed first. There's two lips on the on the mud ring itself, there's a tall lip that goes up into the ceiling and a shallow lip which would be on the room side. To install the mud ring, first apply a single coat of drywall compound along the aperture opening and then press the mud ring into the wet drywall compound, make sure that it squishes through the slots and Gotham G's in the part. Once that's set, you can apply a second coat that should come up to the shallow lip here, and that will form the aperture for the flangeless trim. The ceiling opening has been prepped, and an electrician has brought power and control feed to the install site. Before we do the wire up, we want to make sure that we turn off the power at the supply panel. The first step for doing the wire connections is to remove the top cover of the driver box, and that's held on by two screws. Once the driver box is removed, it's exposed the terminal blocks for where you connect your line power, your common, and your dimming controls. For line voltage dimming or just an on-off fixture, bring a conduit carrying your high voltage lines to the one of the provided knockouts, and then make your connections for your hot, common, and ground leads as indicated by the label on the terminal block. If you're using a zero to 10 controls for dimming, bring your control cable in through a separate conduit into another knockout shown on the, on the housing, and then connect your zero to 10 lines to the dim plus and dim minus as shown on the label. The fixture can either be wired up for gain control where all light heads are controlled with one control, or they can be controlled independently. By following the label on the terminal block, you can see which connection is for which light head. For an end light option, an NPP16D needs to be installed into a junction box not provided into this installation. Then the 0 to 10 lines from the NPP16D would connect the same as the 0 to 10 lines for a normal dimming circuit. 
Now that we've completed the electrical connections in our electrical box, it's time to assemble the multiple head manifold. Out of the box, each head is labeled A or B for a two head, or A, B, and C for a three head fixture. That corresponds with positions A, B, and C on the manifold frame, and connections A, B, and C on the electrical box. To assemble, we just take the light head and it snaps right into the frame. And then we make our corresponding connection from the output on the electrical box to the light head. On the uniform box, all the output connectors will be the same color, indicating they're all the same lumen value. On the configurable and configurable with pendant version, each connector could be a different color corresponding to the lumen value output inside the electrical box. If you've ordered your Gotham Mayo as configurable with pendant, we will ship you a pendant mount instead of one of the light engines. Pendant mount looks like this and contains the low voltage wiring to go down to either your pendant or cylinder and connector to go to the driver box. It would snap into your frame the same way that the light engines do before you install it into the ceiling. Once it's installed into the ceiling and connected to the driver box, the other end would be cut to length by the contractor and then attached to the decorative pendant or cylinder. Now we're ready to install the fixture into the ceiling. So when you're ready to install the fixture into the ceiling, make sure you've got about 12 inches of free conduit coming through the aperture. That'll allow for easier movement of the driver box into the ceiling and easier service later on. So first we want to do is put the electrical box up through the hole in our ceiling, and then we're just going to lay it down on the drywall, or if you have an alternate construction pan, lay it into the pan above the ceiling. Then we're going to put the manifold assembly up through the aperture as well. And this is secured by our spring clips. If it's a one head or two head unit, there's four clips. On this three head unit, there's six. There's some slots inside the frame here for the clip, and I'm feeding the top of the clip in, hooking the bottom into its corresponding slot, and then just pushing it in to snap it in place. These clips are designed for a ceiling thickness between half inch and five eighths. If your ceiling is thinner than half an inch, you'll need to shim around the opening where the clips are. If the ceiling is thicker than five eighths of an inch, please consult your sales agent about ordering a thick ceiling adapter. So if you need to take the manifold frame out of the ceiling, all you need is a flat bladed screwdriver. Insert the blade of the screwdriver into the slot on the clip and push up on the hook. Then you can rotate the clip back into the room side and remove it by hand. So now that the clips are in place, we'll turn on the power and make sure that the fixture is working. Now that your fixture is installed and operating properly, it's time to aim the light heads. With the Gotham Mayo family, each light head can be aimed independently of each other. To accomplish this, you need a 50 thousandths Allen wrench or hex drive. You put the hex drive up into the tilt screw in the fixture, rotate it clockwise to increase the tilt angle or counterclockwise to decrease the tilt. While it's up there, you can rotate the fixture over 360 degrees. Each head can be rotated independently even while tilted over at 40 degrees and there will be no collisions. So the final step to installation is to install the baffle and the trim onto the housing. Both just snap into the ceiling. The baffle goes first, and now we install the trim. It snaps into slots on the housing, and you just follow along with the snaps like a zipper. And that's the final installation for the Gotham Mayo. So your Gotham Mayo fixture has been installed in your space for quite a while, but your space has changed. You've moved furniture, redecorated, whatever, and you want to change how your Mayo fixture looks and how the beam spreads are laid out. The Mayo fixture is designed with many options that can be field interchanged without tools or without any special training. Each light head comes with a refractor or optic that was ordered originally, and they can very easily be removed. If you look at the face of the optic, you'll notice a little shadow that's a slot in the optic holder. Take your fingernail or a small screwdriver 
and you can just pop your optic out of the holder. In this case, we've got a 15 degree refractor and its holder. We'll set those aside. We could replace that with a wall wash, a snoot, an elliptical beam, or a hex louver. We could also just change the distribution to go from a narrower beam to a wider beam or anywhere in between. Each optic will snap in, and you'll notice on the retainer there's a small slot in the snap feature. That lines up with the slot that's in the housing. So to add a snoot to our refractor, we put our refractor back in place, we align that snap slot with the slot in the holder. There you go. Our elliptical distributions are created with two parts. We use a 15 degree refractor and then one of four diffuser films that create an elliptical beam. You can tell the orientation of the beam by noticing where the notch is on the edge of the part. That indicates the major axis of the ellipse. The film goes on top of the refractor and the small holder goes on top of that and then it snaps right into the housing. Again, looking for the slot in the holder, lining it up with the slot in the housing and it just goes in with the snap. In addition to the field interchangeable optics, we also offer multiple colored baffles and trim styles for the Gotham Mile. For more information or an electronic copy of our installation instructions, please see our website at gothamlighting.com.